Hello, we are back with part two of the Blender for Maya Artists uh, tutorial series. Um, in the last part, we went over the UI and how to install Blender. Now we're going to go into the settings to get you all set up, you know, like you'd want to be. So let's go over to File, and we're going to go down to User Preferences. Note that the hotkey for this is Control-Alt-U. It's helpful. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Interface. We'll just, you know, start here for now. And things to change. Let me just look at my notes here. Yes, all right, so uh, I don't find that cursor depth is useful, and it uses depth under the mouse. Um, not that useful. Uh, we also want to enable auto perspective. And I'm going to turn off uh, show the splash screen because I don't find it to be actually helpful. Um, anything else? Anything else? No, I think that's about it in this section. Pretty easy. All right. Uh, in the editing tab, though, yeah, actually, I don't think there's really anything we need to change here. Not at the moment anyways. Oh, uh, one thing. Global undo. Let's, uh, let's up that a bit because 32 steps when you're modeling is not a whole lot. So I'm gonna up this to 200, but keep in mind uh, that this will affect your memory. Um, I've got 32 gigabytes in the system, so I think I, think I should be able to handle that. Um, <clears throat> but if you find that your blender is being slow, you might want to look at that, although there are plenty of other things that could be doing that. Um, let's see. Let's go to File. Under File, <clears throat> the only thing that we're going to change is where our temporary files are being stored. And right now, this is being saved to my C drive, which is a solid state drive, um, meaning it's not a huge capacity. And Blender will save a lot of save files, which is fantastic because the autosave actually works, unlike Maya if you're using the student version. Um, so what we can do is we're gonna just change this to be somewhere a little more uh, helpful. So I'm just gonna go to my, mm, let's do the art drive for now. Still an SSD with a fairly small capacity, but uh, this is just where I'm gonna put it for now. So I'm just gonna go into Blender Foundation and I'm gonna create a new folder called Blender Temp. And then accept that, and there you go. Um, your stuff will not be filling up your C drive and you can have programs and games and stuff on there. From there, I think that's all we really need to change there, which is good. And now let's go to system. Okay. So here we have some more, uh, more hardware type stuff, I guess. Uh, DPI, that's where you would change, you'd change this if you're using um, like a 4K display you definitely want to change that, otherwise everything will be tiny. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the compute device. So right now it's using the CPU, which for cycles is the slowest way to render it. Um, so I'm going to change it over to CUDA. Um, and remember, CUDA is NVIDIA specific, and Blender is very optimized for NVIDIA, um, and AMD is I don't actually know if they're even officially supported, their graphics cards. But, um, so then you'll, it'll show your graphics cards, although I have two 1070s, so I will be changing it to use both of those, which really helps render times because it means that it can render two tiles at once. Um, so if you have multiple graphics cards, definitely be sure to set it to that so that you can take full advantage of them. Next, we're gonna move over to 
anisotropic filtering. I personally use 16x, um, but again, you only want to use higher settings than default if your if your system can handle it. And then after that, um, window draw method automatic is okay for now, uh, but I'm going to set the multi sample to 16 as well. That'll make it look, or the, it'll make the interface look a little nicer uh, in the 3D view. And is there anything else here? Nope, I think that's about it. Let's see what's next. All right, let's go to add-ons. Add-ons are scripts, basically. Um, these are little tools that lots of people make, and these are all the ones that ship by default with Blender. So um, there's lots of good stuff in there. Um, first, we'll use the Copy Attributes menu, the Dynamic Spacebar menu, Layer Management, um, Curves, ex these are like extra things in the Create menu, which are helpful, like a Bolt Factory, Extra Objects. Um, this one I could not live without because almost all of my models I start from a single vertex, and this gives me that option, which is just lovely. Uh, from there, we're going to move down, and let's see, let's find OBJ import. Oh, uh, first, import images as planes. This is how you get around um, the awful interaction with background images in Blender. Let's see. And yeah, well, somewhere in here. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, Wavefront OBJ. It's already enabled. Perfect. Next, we're going to enable material utilities, custom normal tools, inset polygon, loop tools are a must have, node wrangler, relax is helpful. And most of these are fairly self-explanatory, but you can also expand these to figure out a little bit more uh, about what they do. And let's see. You can use things like auto tile size if you're not sure what is gonna be best for your particular system when you're rendering. Um, Oh, and the very last one, which I personally love, is the pie menus. These are my uh, marking menus that you can use for, um, you know, your, uh, whatchamacallit. No, that's not helpful. Um, for navigation, for getting to different views, for changing the uh, viewport rendering mode, and lots of other stuff it's very helpful and that is going to wrap up part two of the blender for my artists tutorial series uh, in the next part we're going to start going over various uh, hotkeys and which ones are useful and uh, yeah i hope to see you there